Wow, the response to this guy has been <laughs> extraordinary. That is a lesson learned for me in the sense of what you guys will come over to see. I think of these videos as me calling a neighborhood meeting, you know? I post the video, everybody come over to my house and let's talk about the latest project. Uh, I have found that when I post long detailed videos where, I mean, they're, they're very tightly edited. There's no fluff in there, I don't think. But you guys don't watch those videos as much. This one has already got hundreds of comments and has only been posted for barely a day. So that to me uh, is maybe telling that the time is a, is a big factor there. Uh, this project, I wanna answer some questions that you guys have posted because it's really important to me that the conversation in the comments is fruitful. Many of you are recommending things I've already tried and that's because I didn't tell you what I tried. So let me explain to you today uh, what I got going on. I'm sorry this video is so shaky. It's because I'm having to use my phone. My GoPro camera is uh, about on its last leg. I have lost a lot of footage, including some footage of for my motor, uh, how motors work video. And I'm gonna have to reshoot all that. And so I decided to post a video that updates you on the shredder. Now, the first comment that I've gotten a lot, which I think was the obvious one. In fact, I was very intentional about making it clear that this thing is freaking scary. And that's why I shot the angle like this so that you'd be right engaged with the blade. I wanted you to feel the nervousness that I felt standing in front of the thing. Heck yeah, it's dangerous. That was the whole point. So, uh, you know, yeah, it's dangerous. All right, now that we got that out of the way, number two, uh, I do plan to mitigate that problem by putting a hopper here in the front. So I'm gonna extend this shape out this way It'll have more Lexan on top. Lexan is a very tough shatter resistant material. So this is not plexiglass, which would, which would not be ideal for this application, I think. Lexan is better for materials. In fact, many machine shops use Lexan to guard their equipment because it's, it's shatter resistant and tough. Now, it looks like plexiglass, but it's not. Okay, so there'll be a hopper like box here in the front and uh, little tabs here that act like stop blocks. And also I plan to make a plunger to push the plastic into the blades. When I do that, the first time I'll, I'll make the plunger a little long so that it actually gets cut by the blades and develops this contour. And that should help me to uh, get all the plastic efficiently into the blades. Uh, common question was, why not use counter rotating blades in between these blades or use small blades in between to help grab the plastic? Because you saw in the last video, I would feed it in straight and then feed it sideways to kind of chop off the, the long strands that I made. Well, there are a couple issues with that. Number one, if I put when I put the blades closer together, because I've tried all kinds of configurations here. First, I just put these blades right next to each other, no spacers in between. You can see they're just washers in there. With no space, I, I didn't have any room for anything to shear the plastic off. And what would happen is instead of the blades cutting the plastic, it would grab it, yank it down into the hole, and that would just freak you out. That was really scary and dangerous because it was literally pulling my hand towards the blade. That is not a good design at all. You don't want them close together. Related to that is dado blades. You would say, well, why don't you use dado blades? Uh, I did use dado blades. That didn't work uh, for the same reason, but also because dado blades are not balanced. It shook the whole machine like crazy, and you either had to tweak them so that they were uh, offset from each other at exactly the right angle to keep them from shaking the machine. That was not worth the time. It took way too much effort. Another problem with counter rotating blades in between is now you need twice as much power. You are forcing a whole lot more mass to rotate at a very high speed. So that to me is not a good idea at all. I'm already using one horsepower and that's way more than I want to use for this design. This is designed to be something that can be easily built at home, once it's safe, of course, that can be easily built at home with something like this, a half horsepower motor that you salvaged out of a washing machine, or you know, at, at a minimum, a half horsepower motor is gonna be much cheaper. So my goal is for this to be done with a small motor. I don't wanna have more horsepower just to get the machine to run. That leads me to the question about speed. Well, why is it running so fast? Well, I chose 4,800 RPM because that's the speed of my table saw and I'm using saw blades. I thought that might be a good place to start. I did try lower speeds, but I didn't try in between speeds like maybe 2,000 to 3,600. Maybe that's worth trying, but I don't think those speeds actually increase the safety. 
and it didn't make anything any more effective. So I'm not sure that it's worth the trouble, but when you drop it much lower, like less than 2000 RPM, again, it grabs the plastic instead of cutting it. And now you're yanking your hand towards the blades again. That's not a good design, I think. So we don't want the blades to be much slower. I haven't tried all the speeds, but I know that low speeds either lead to the blade binding up and it can't cut it, or it would yank the plastic out of your hand. Again, not safe at all. I didn't like that. At 4,800 RPM and this spacing, which allowed me to have enough shear material in here so that it doesn't break off, I did try like a 1 8 inch gap, uh, which is about three millimeters. And the material just broke away there. It wasn't strong enough. And I was back to the problem I had before. Now you have a big gap. The plastic gets yanked out of your hand. So the gap is important here. And this is about the right size. Before I forget, there's one more thing that people have suggested, which is why are you building all this to begin with? Why not just buy one of those credit card shredders? Won't that shred plastic? And the answer is I've already tried that. You should look at previous videos and you will see that I've already done this in the shredder series. I even took the blades out of that credit card shredder and hooked it up to a larger motor and tried to shred plastic. Again, that doesn't work. Those blades aren't designed to handle that kind of speed. That shredder, the assembly, the gears, none of it could handle the power of a larger motor. It's just not made for that. It's made primarily for cutting paper and occasionally cutting a credit card once every few months. I plan to use this thing a lot and therefore I need something that is not gonna tear up on me after just a few uses, then I've wasted that money because I've thrown that thing in the trash to go buy another shredder. Paper shredders will not work unless you were talking about like an industrial grade 50 page plus shredder, but now you've gone back to a very costly project. So that doesn't work for what we are trying to do here. One more question. Uh, another question I got is, why aren't you gravity feeding this from the top? Like, come on guys. I mean, that's what all shredders look like. Of course I tried that. I thought that was going to be an obvious one, but you know, because it's so obvious, people ask and that's fair. So here's the deal. When I fed it from the top, I didn't have a shear plate. That was problem number one. So that leads to all the things that I talked about earlier, snatching the plastic out of your hand. But that was when I was forcing it and I actually had to push harder because the wind from the blades going by was blowing the plastic back out of the shredder. So I would try dropping it in and it would just blow out all over the room. It didn't cut it at all gravity feed does not work. This is why I went to this design. This allowed me to put the shear plate here. I'm going to have a cover in the front and I can push the plastic into the blades. That's going to allow me to control the feed rate and everything without worrying about plastic blowing all over the room. One guy said, well, don't use dust collection. You're going to be sucking away all your plastic. Well, obviously, I want to, I want to keep that plastic. The dust collection will feed back into the barrel that's collecting the plastic. I want that plastic too. Uh, one person suggested that I try to add additional blades. And at first I was like, heck yeah, I'll do that. That sounds good, but I'm running out of space here. I need these nuts in order to lock the blades in place. So I don't know that I'm gonna be able to practically add more unless I open up this gap here, which is almost big enough now, and let these nuts sit inside of this gap here. And then I might be able to fill the space in. So. That's a design idea that I'm that I'm is worth investigating. So thank you for recommending that. I'm gonna look into that some more. Fred, one of my neighbors, suggested that when you shred the plastic really small, like this granular stuff here in the corner, that you end up that you don't get a proper melt. Uh, he had some issues with melting, and he even sent some pictures, which was awesome, man. You're always so engaged with my videos, so thank you uh, for all the feedback and, and let me know your experiences. I mean, all my tinkerers out there, I want to talk to you guys. And if you send me a comment, I'll respond. Let's let's work this out together. That's why I like doing this. It's the, in fact, it's my favorite part of posting videos on YouTube. That first two hours or so, when everybody's at my house and we're talking about the project, man, I love that. So anyway, uh, Fred, I haven't tried it yet. I'm going to actually try to melt some of this tonight and uh, I'm going to put another little piece here. I won't shred any more plastic like this and get all the willies out of you guys. Don't worry. I knew I was going to provoke the safety police to come by. And so I'm not surprised at the safety comments at all. Uh, one little side note, just for, just for my subscribers, you would notice that on my about page and in none of my videos do I really talk a lot about safety. And there's a reason for that. I feel 
I feel wrong telling people like, don't try this at home and you're watching me do it. Uh, I think everybody needs to be responsible for their own safety. So if I talk about safety, it will be something that because of the camera angle or something like that, it doesn't look dangerous, but I think it is. Then I'm going to tell you, hey, you know, this may look like it's OK, but you need to be aware of X, Y and Z. Otherwise, I'm not going to put links in my videos telling people to don't try this at home and don't be. You know what? These are prototypes and I'm I'm experimenting. So you got to be you got to decide what risk you want to take for your projects. Whew, OK, I got all that off my chest. Now we're back on the same page. Let's reconvene this meeting in the comments because, man, do I love talking about this stuff with you guys. And uh, boy, that was a terrifying view, wasn't it? Man, I still get a little shiver every time I turn this thing on and hear that little. There's a nice little beep sound. If you watched a previous video. Beep, and then it starts kicking up the blaze. Oh, man, it just sends shivers down my spine. This thing is awesome. It's like a ride at Six Flags, although you could probably lose an arm on this ride. So anyway, I will uh, talk with you guys in the comments and uh, thank you for watching.